When you apply effects and layer styles to stencils and track mats, some things work, some things don't work, and some things are kind of surprising. So I'm going to go through the various combinations and permutations in this lesson. To follow along, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and then open up 1104 Effects Styles. We're going to start off by working with the track mat. So here we have the solid layer that's in fact an animated background, and we've got the text on top, and we've created a track mat using the text as the track mat. I've got this background here that we'll be talking about a little bit later. I've got it turned off for the time being. There it is. Turn it back off. Okay, let's see what happens. I want to apply a drop shadow to this. So I'm going to go over to Effects and Presets and type in Drop, D-R-O-P-S, and there's Drop Shadow. Now I want to apply it to something. I'm not sure which, though. Do I apply it to the mat, which is turned off? Do I apply it to the solid? So let's just see what happens. We'll start with the mat first. Drag this to the mat, and let's see what happens. Aha, something shows up there. Let me move it a little bit, and it's purple. It is the color of the solid layer, which probably is not what you want to have when you're working with a drop shadow. If I click up here and change the color to something else, it won't change. It'll be just the color of that solid layer. So that is not a proper way to do a drop shadow. Let me delete that. So I guess the option is to apply it to the solid layer, right? Let's drop it down there and see what happens. And nothing happens. We can drag this thing off to the distance and it's not going to show up. That's because this drop shadow is being applied to the edges of this entire solid layer not to the text here in the middle. So neither works. Let me delete that. So how do we resolve this? Well, we nest this in another composition. I brought that up in the last lesson, and I'll remind you about that here, and I'll talk about it in more detail in an upcoming chapter. Let me go to the project over here. We're going to nest this guy inside this background, inside this comp that has just a background layer. So I'm going to go get my track mat right there. There is the track mat comp, and it has you know three layers in it, two of which are turned off. I'm going to drag it down here. It'll be one layer here, and there's our guy. And now I'll drag a drop shadow to it, and it's a layer now. It's not something weird like a track mat or whatever. It's now just a standard layer, and now there is the drop shadow showing up. I'll do the distance here so you can see it, and it's the proper black color that we want to have, and there you go. So the drop shadow works once we put this inside another comp, once we nest it in another comp. All right, let's go back here to the first one. Let's say I want to apply a different kind of effect. I'll go over here and type in wave, wave warp. There it is. I'm going to drop wave warp on this. I want to drop it on the first layer here, on the top layer, the text layer. So I'll drag wave warp to the top one. And wave warp animates on its own. So there it is, and it affects the text. Even though the text is the mat, it still gets animated. There you go. But if you look carefully down there, you'll see that the layer, the solid, is not being distorted. It's not being waved around. It's staying in a straight line, relatively speaking. So this effect is not affecting this solid down here, only the text. I'll get rid of that by just deleting it over here. So I'll apply it down here to the solid layer. Here we go. Here we're down to this layer. And now it's taking care of the solid, but not animating the text, which is fine. If you want to apply it to both, then what do you do there? Well, you could apply it one at a time to each of them, and that's fine, but then the animation may not be in sync. So you may want to apply it to both using something called an adjustment layer. So I'm going to get rid of this wave warp here, and we're going to apply an adjustment layer to this thing. So I'll right-click, a new adjustment layer, and anything we apply to the adjustment layer will affect whatever's below it that's visible. So I'm going to apply the wave warp to the adjustment layer. There we go. And it animates both, both the text and the underlying solid here. But there's a little bit of an issue here. Let's say we want to have a background now. I'm going to turn on the background and look what happens to the background. It too gets the wave warp, and that's probably not what you really had in mind. You just want to animate the text, right? Just want to animate the track mat. So let's undo that. Getting rid of that, getting rid of the adjustment layer for the time being. And we'll go over again to that nested comp here, and here, if we want to apply the wave warp here, we can do it without having it affect things below it, because we can apply it directly to both things at once here, because they're all put together inside that single nested comp. So that's how you can do it and not affect the layer below it. Okay? All kinds of little workarounds that happen inside After Effects that you need to kind of consider as you work through After Effects. So let's go back here. I want to talk about layer styles as opposed to effects. I want to apply a layer style to this track mat. So I'm going to right-click on the text here in the top, and say layer style. Let's have a drop shadow here. And it looks like something kind of is happening. Let's take a look at it here. Pull that away. We'll just have it be distance here. Pull that away. 
Yep, and it's going to be that same purple color issue we saw before, so that really is not going to work. So we need to apply the layer style to the solid layer here and see what happens to that. And when we applied a drop shadow effect here before, it didn't work because this is a full solid layer here and it puts it around the edges. But a layer style here behaves differently. So I'll right click on it. I'll go to layer styles, drop shadow. There we go. And lo and behold, the darn thing works here. Look at this. I'll pull the drop shadow away here. And it actually does work inside the layer that a track map's been applied to. How about that? If we add, let's say, a bevel and emboss to it, I'll just right click on it again and say, let's add a bevel and emboss. There we go. There's the bevel. Open it up a little bit. Change the size a bit. There you go. So you can apply layer styles to the layer that a track map's applied to, which you're going to find does not work with stencils. So let's move over to the stencil now. Here's our stencil. I want to apply a drop shadow to this. So I'm going to go over here and go drop shadow. Drop shadow. And we'll apply it to this. Now, really, the only option would be the top, right? Because everything else here is to blend it in with the rest of them. So I go to the top one there, apply that. Looks like we actually got a drop shadow there, but you know it's going to be the same kind of thing we saw before. It's going to pick up the colors of all those layers. And really, it's not the way a drop shadow should work. So I'll delete that. So we know that's not going to work. If I right click on this and I want to apply a layer style drop shadow, watch what happens here. I'll right click, go to layer styles, drop shadow, and it's going to just kill it. Boom, gone. It puts a drop shadow on the text itself. It's there, but it just destroys the stencil. It still says stencil here. It still says stencil over here, right? There's stencil alpha, but it's not working. If I switch to normal, nothing's going to change. It's not really working as a stencil anymore. The layer style simply just overrides the stencil in the case of stencil as opposed to in the case of a track mat. So let me just undo those things a couple of times. Go back to the stencil and get rid of the layer style and go back to that. So in this case, if I want to apply a layer style, I need to nest this into a different comp. So we go to the stencil background here. I'm going to go back to project. Take my stencil comp here and drag it here and nest this comp there. And now this stencil comp is just a layer here. And now I can apply a layer style to it without any problems at all. I'll go to layer styles. Drop shadow, there we go. And there's the drop shadow. I can open this thing up. We'll see the drop shadow coming down there like that. And I can do the same thing as before. I can right click and add a bevel and emboss. Here we go. Same thing happens as before. Let me go to the bevel and emboss and take a look at that. Make it larger. There we go. So that works. If you want to apply a layer style to a stencil, you can't do it to the stencil itself. You need to nest it in another comp. Okay. I'm going to undo all that by just deleting that entire comp. We'll go back to this one. What about applying effects like wave warp again? So I'll go back to wave warp and I'll apply that to the top. And it will affect everything because the stencil cuts through everything. So before when we applied it to the track mat, it affected just the elements, just the track mat or the layer to which the track mat was applied. But when you apply it to a stencil, it goes through everything. It warps everything or whatever effect you've got there warps everything. So you might not want to affect everything. You might not want to distort the text. You might want to only have what's inside it get distorted. So let me show you the trick for that. Just do controller command Z to undo that. I'm going to add an adjustment layer here. Right click, new adjustment layer. And I'm going to put the wave warp on the adjustment layer. The adjustment layer will affect everything that it can see, everything that's visible below it. Put the wave warp on the adjustment layer. There we go. And lo and behold, it does the exact same thing we did before. It affects everything just the way applying it to the stencil applies everything. But if I want it to show up only on the layers below the text, I can just take the adjustment layer and drop it below the text layer. Now the text layer stays straight, but all the layers below it have that distortion, have that wave warp, which, you know, on its own is pretty great. But if I want to put a background here beneath this, you know that the background is going to disappear, or if I blend it in, it's going to blend in, but the wave warp will apply to the background as well. So how do we get around that? Well, we nest it inside some other comp. So I'm going to go over here to stencil background. I'm going to nest that comp here now. And now we can have a background that will not be warped. I'll take stencil and put it on top there. There you go. Now everything was warped as it was before, but we're not affecting the layer below it because we've just nested this guy inside here. And if I go back now to stencil, let's say I want to affect everything. I'll take the adjustment layer and move it up now like that. Now it affects everything. Go back to stencil background, and lo and behold, it affects everything, but it does not affect the background. So I think you can see that there's some basic rules that you need to think of when you're applying effects or layer styles to track mats or stencils. Just kind of think of how they're constructed, and that will help you realize what's going right and what's going wrong 
will also help you realize how to solve the little problems that you need to overcome to get the effects to look the way you want them to look.